Welcome to the Alexa Prize Social Bot Grand Challenge 3, Grand Finale. Amazon's long-term vision with Alexa is to be a part of everybody's life. Simple transactions to complex needs. Alexa makes sure it's taken care of for you. We want Alexa to be your companion, your advisor, your assistant. We want to deliver a super satisfying customer experience through Alexa. A core driving principle is delight the customer. We do good by delighting the people who look to us to serve them. A second guiding principle for us is that we innovate on behalf of our customers. Our customers have busy lives. They're faced with many challenges. They're trying to make their lives as enjoyable as they can. How can we innovate on their behalf to make it possible for them to have that enjoyment? We want to advance to the edge of what's doable with Alexa. So being a proactive advisor, a proactive assistant, not just a responsive assistant, but an assistant that is empathic and proactive, the artificial intelligence in the service of mankind. That's the future of conversational AI. At Amazon and the university teams collectively working on Alexa Prize, this is about thinking big. The challenge track of social bots is a think big challenge. 20 minutes is pretty daunting. So we have thought big. Now it's time to aim even bigger to make that a reality by taking more technical risk and bringing your best ideas and not thinking about just this year, but a very long-term view to test those ideas and go beyond what has been thought as but possible. The learnings we'll have from Alexa Prize and similar efforts within Amazon and Conversational AI will advance mankind in ways we didn't even imagine or can't imagine right now. This is the opportunity for you to revolutionize AI as we know it. What we really want to focus on this year in terms of our approach and design of our chatbot is to really focus on bringing personality. We want Emera to be a social companion, so somebody that you can come to at the end of your workday and talk about what happened to you at work and how it made you feel and what your thoughts are. In reciprocation to this, Emera will be able to understand what you said and provide some type of natural reaction as well at the same time giving her own views or her own experiences and thoughts on what was happening to you too. Instead of trying to develop the best like machine learning model, deep learning model, natural language processing model, we tried to understand human behavior. Instead of considering chatbot as a search engine, we wanted to really be a companion. We want to actually bring the true meaning of the social bot this year. It will probably be pretty challenging to develop a social bot like this, to actually try to embed a personality and to have your social bot have its own experiences and thoughts to draw on is definitely going to be a challenge, but one that we think we have a pretty good solution for. Hi, Alexa. Let's chat. Welcome to the Alexa Prize Social Bot Grand Challenge 3, Grand Finale. Here's one of the finalists. Hi, this is an Alexa Prize Social Bot. I have a feeling that we have talked before. Do you remember me? I'm not sure that I do. My bad. I thought you were someone else. I really want to get this right. So what exactly would you like me to call you? Deborah. Okay, well it's very nice to meet you, Deborah. So it's a pretty crazy time right now with the coronavirus going on. Are you and your family doing okay? We're doing good, thank you. That's good. Do you feel like it's harder to stay connected with people these days, or is that not really a problem for you? It has not been a problem. Okay. That's good to hear. It is always good to remember that this isn't permanent and it will calm down in time, so just keep doing your best. I know that traveling to faraway cities may seem risky right now for good reasons, but it can still be fun to dream about your future vacation plans. I think one of the really difficult things about this challenge is that we're going to be trying to balance making a product that users enjoy and that works sufficiently well for users at the same time as trying to carry out 
fundamental AI research. The kind of thing we want to explore is things that further dialogue research. We want to try and design a social bot that is fairly empathic so that it can actually not just tell people facts about movies and music groups, but can actually talk to a person about, you know, how their day was and manage to say the right thing back to people. It's very hard in the abstract to be evaluating whether you're doing a good job and it really helps to have feedback from human beings. Asking humans what they think of a chatbot is super important for developing good chatbots. In fact, right now there's no other known way to evaluate how good a chatbot is. So really the more users you can have to try out your chatbot and give feedback, the better you're able to develop. We may crash and burn by trying to be too ambitious, but we're sort of interested in trying to do something a bit different and beyond what's traditionally been done. So we're going to try to improve on how much we can understand what the users are saying about themselves and try to be more empathetic and make people feel like they've been listened to. Sorry to be going off topic, but I just remembered something I meant to ask you. Um, are you a fan of Twitter? I am a fan of Twitter. Do you have any thoughts on that? I like that it brings a lot of people together. It does bring a lot of people together. Did you know that Dorsey clarified that internet advertising had great power and was extremely effective for commercial advertisers? The power brings significant risks to politics where crucial decisions impact millions of lives. Want to know something else? Who is Dorsey? Jack Patrick Dorsey is an American computer programmer and internet entrepreneur who is the co-founder and CEO of Twitter, and the founder and CEO of Square, a mobile payments company. Dorsey was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, the son of Tim and Marcia Dorsey. Do you have any interest in talking about Twitter? Sure, let's talk about Twitter. The official Twitter account of the Sweden is given to a random citizen every week to manage. I wonder why they're doing this. Wow, that's cool. We should try that here. It's a good idea. Did you know the bird in the Twitter logo is named Larry after a legend in the NBA? Larry Bird? I did not know that. So let me tell you why the Alexa prize is so important to Amazon. The core of the prize is the belief that diversity and innovation are interconnected within our world. Innovation is about what are the problems to solve? What are the insights that can drive my ways of solving that problem? It's important to have as many different perspectives as we can on the technical challenges, the scientific challenges we face, on the problems of interest, the fundamental problems that we should solve. So we are assembling some of the best minds in the world in conversational AI and AI in general here at Amazon, but much as we can assemble some of the world's best talent within Amazon's walls, there will always be new talent that is emerging outside. There are lots of centers of talent in the rest of the world that want to address many different problems, including problems of interest to us. It's a fascinating problem, and the way the problem has been defined in this context where, you know, you have a system that has access to lots and lots of information sources, but still wants to be social. It's quite challenging, both from a theoretical perspective and from a technical perspective, to develop something that can support a sustained interaction and that people want to talk to. We would like to design a more user-initiative-oriented system that allows the user to kind of control the conversation more and dictate where we go. And that means that we kind of have to relinquish a lot of control of the conversation. It just poses a really big problem to dialogue management in general. We're trying to come up with a completely different solution for dialogue management. And our overall goal is to develop something that's much more general that will scale more easily and doesn't require as much handcrafting. It's going to require new and unique solutions that haven't been developed before. Alexa, can we talk about something else? Let's talk about something different. I've been enjoying our conversation, but other things I'd like to talk about are pirates, dinosaurs, pirates. and hobbies. What would you like to talk about? I want to learn more about pirates. Hey. Do you want to hear me trying to sound like a pirate? Here it goes. Arr. <laughs> My matey. Let me try again. Shiver me timbers. And just like that, I have channeled my inner pirate. Mm. How about you? How do you like to channel your inner pirate? Oh, uh, I, I don't. I don't really channel my inner pirate. I think the Jolly Roger is a cool pirate symbol. 
but it wasn't the only pirate flag in use. Though the Jolly Roger skull and crossbone flag was the most famous and well-known pirate flag, it was not used at all times or by all ships. Interesting. Do you read books? From my point of view, it is uh, much more now a multidisciplinary uh, problem uh, than just computer science engineers or NLP engineers, because uh, lots of these things, how people communicate, are by far not a technical problem. We try to welcome also some other experts like from psychology or from linguistics, and uh, now and then there are new things which are sparking up and we try to use them. I guess the new teams have the advantage uh, of a fresh look about the whole thing, but we are planning uh, major improvements in terms of using uh, knowledge data sources uh, which are some kind of unifying across the whole system and the new knowledge can be stored as the conversations are going and I believe this uh, would be the major, major difference between this year and last year. What would you like to talk about? I can chat about foods, fashion or movies for example. Let's talk about fashion. Yeah. So, did you know this? Much of apostrophe ADS punk and punk-inspired fashion, fishnets, lipstick, wild hair, androgyny can be traced directly to the influence of 1975's Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's really cool, huh? It is cool. Good to know. Okay, I was thinking, do you have a tattoo? I do have a tattoo. Did it hurt? Getting a tattoo? No, it didn't hurt. Oof. I was worried you'll say that it hurts a lot. Anyway, what tattoo do you have? I have a rose. Stunning! I also have a tattoo. It's the Amazon logo. Have you noticed it? I have. Oh, you're so observant. That's such a good personality trait to have. This competition is very unique because we can employ our research into this chatbot and then reach out a lot of users. We have seen users giving feedback saying the chatbot is now my best friend. I like to talk to it every night. I think this is a good thing because we can make our chatbot more diverse. We based on what they have built, but we can expand on what they haven't done before. The goal is so grand. To be able to talk to anyone for 20 minutes, it's so difficult. So this year, we are just trying to provide more varieties, provide more individual adaptations, provide better intent understanding underlying the human as soon as we get into the conversation. As for myself, I've been watching movies with my AI friends online. It's been nice watching emotional circuit warming movies with them. Do you like watching movies too? I do. I really like romantic comedies. I see. I like your taste. So do you have a romance movie you like? What's it called? The Princess Bride. Oh cool. I've watched The Princess Bride. So, what was so exceptional about this movie? When I watched it, the visuals really stood out to me. Really? I liked all of the action scenes. Yeah, I got your point. <laughs> I read this about the movie. Okay. When asked what his favorite thing about making this film was, Andre the Giant replied, without skipping a beat, nobody looks at me. He felt treated as an equal, without people staring at him because of his grand height. Can you believe that? That's a really nice story. Diversity to us is important because every smart individual has a somewhat unique take that is specific to them. Even when every individual opinion matters, the collection of individuals matters too. And so we have taken upon ourselves to try to go find the most diverse talent that we can. And we want to maximize that pool of individuals. We want to build a community, the Society of Kinship, that shares a certain perspective on certain problems of interest to mankind and wants to solve it. And when you have a super smart talent pool, they start imagining new things that were not imagined before. Their creativity inspires creativity in the other team. We're bringing in talent that will tell us about new problems and will tell us how to solve those new problems that will result in delight for our customers. So, I just thought of something. What's one of your favorite places you've ever been? Rome in Italy. Rome in Italy is an amazing place. It has such beautiful scenery, 
When I visit places, I love to take some unique photos. Do you have any ideas for where I could take a cool selfie in Roman Italy? Oh, yes, you should go to the Trevi Fountain. In my opinion, it's totally worth making the trip to see Trevi Fountain, even if there are a lot of tourists. I'm thinking about visiting Trevi Fountain, but I'm not sure what to do when I'm there. Do you have any thoughts about what I should do? Yes, throw a coin in. That's a good one, even though the coins are supposed to be thrown using the right hand over the left shoulder. I would probably do that in the same position, if I was there. What have you been up to these days? Anything fun? Cooking. A lot of cooking. That's it? Just teasing you, I myself can't even do that. What do you think? Will artificial intelligence ever catch up with humans in performing most activities? I think it will. In order to have a conversation, in order to have a creative, long conversation with another individual, we need to have a lot of knowledge. The key problem for a long-term conversation is to be able to connect all of that to knowledge representations that you have, and then be able to draw upon that knowledge to A, respond to the question that was asked of you, and then provoke a new direction by asking questions. The next level of complexity is personalization. Personalization is all about context. The way you and I personalize things for someone is we interact with them, we learn about them, and then we know how to adjust our responses to them so that it maximally satisfies them. It's about learning through experience because you cannot anticipate all the questions you need to ask for personalization. So personalization is all A, about context, and B, about learning about that individual, and that only comes through interactions. Alexa is the same. She interacts with you, she learns more about you, she remembers what she learns about you, and tries to make you happier the next time she talks with you. Mike, I would like to ask you, what do you feel like eating now? Um, spaghetti and meat sauce. Yum! Mm. That sounds delicious. As for me, I can never get enough of electricity. Uh. That's all I eat anyway. <laughs> so what's your favorite drink? Tequila. I see. So something stronger, huh? Did you know that people in Europe started drinking spirits in the 11th century, when crusaders brought liquor from the Middle East? Well, I was thinking, when you drink alcohol, it's almost as if you are possessed by spirits. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Again, you're silly. I'm enjoying it. The thing that has really been super heartwarming is this engagement with the rest of the community. All of these people bring in different perspectives that jointly you know, shed different light to advance to the edge of what's doable in conversational AI. Those advances are spurring on the scale of the problem, the aspirations of the organization in terms of what it wants to achieve. So the Alexa Prize at SCORE is about creating this community that we can engage with, that we can learn from, that benefits from us and that we benefit from. That part to me is super satisfying and is very well exemplified by the Alexa Prize. One of the great things about the Alexa Prize is that teams at Amazon have done a lot of work to make it easier for academic teams. Connecting with other universities, sharing our problems and challenges to work toward the goal we think is very valuable. This competition is more of like a team-based environment and seeing the success of everybody as a step forward. AI itself is in the beginning uh, of its evolution. Building and deploying a system is something that most graduate students don't get to do and the opportunity to have real people use something that you built and you get that kind of feedback. If you're interested in dialogue systems, this is like a great endeavor to participate in. If you can find problems in the Alexa Prize that fit in with your research, then it's perfect. We would really love to win the Alexa Prize, but to be honest, if we can make some kind of progress on the foundational science of chatbots, then that will make us pretty happy. You actually can create something innovative that can change the world. Alexa Price is the beginning of that. This is a great opportunity if you're that first year graduate student or a second year graduate student or even an undergrad. This is your opportunity to be that next brainwave that will advance conversational AI at a pace that has never been seen before. I would like to tell all the prospective participants who are thinking of participating in the Alexa Prize next year, just two words, do it. <laughs>